Rebirth of the Malicious Empress of Military Lineage, Chapter 172, Trouble. At this night, someone deliberately disturbed a pool of spring water and caused the flowers to bloom even in the cold winds of winter. Naturally there were plans that fell through and currently there were people who were in a thundering rage. In the residence of Prince Zhu and Prince Li, it was such a situation. In this evening, Someone knocked Prince Zhu's room door and Prince Zhu thought it was the servants and called them to enter but no one entered. Prince Zhu got up to open the doors and saw two ice-cold corpses directly hitting his face. No one knew how the two corpses came into the residence of Prince Zhu. Prince Zhu flew into a rage and punished all the guards that were on night duty harshly before looking through carefully for traitors but at the end it was all without success. The two corpses were also identified as the assassins who was sent off to date to kill Shen Miao. Prince Shu's heart was restless and on the very night called Prince Jing over so that the two brothers could research the matter carefully. As for Prince Li's end, it was even worse. Someone just threw two bodies directly into the residence from the walls and scared guards in the residence of Prince Li. The guards went out to chase but could not even find the shadows of anyone. At the end they found out that the two corpses were the assassins that were sent to kill Shen Miao. Prince Li was very troubled and restless of it. Obviously his assassins were killed and his route was broken and naturally that was his enemy. However for his enemy ending capital to be this highly skilled that the entire residence of Prince Li's guards could not even catch one person, Prince Li was extremely dissatisfied. At the other end, the two brothers, Prince Zhu and Prince Jing, were in the middle of a discussion. Prince Zhu asked, who do you think did it? Prince Jing muttered, perhaps it is Prince Li. I too think so. Prince Zhu nodded his head. Perhaps he is taking the opportunity to threaten me or perhaps he has the same thoughts as me. However Prince Li always has an amicable appearance and would not do such a matter that could tear it apart. Prince Jing shook his head, it might also be from the crown prince's hands. The crown prince? Price Zhu paused before nodding his head. These years the crown prince was proclaimed sick but everyone knew that it was just a cover-up. Neither one of us had seen his methods before and if he cause an internal fight between me and Prince Li, the crown prince can enjoy the benefits of a fisherman after the fight. Correct. Prince Jing sighed, you better not forget there is another person. Number 9. Forget about number 9. Prince Shu waved his hand without a care for it, even if number 9 make it known. He has no guts to do it as he does not move in the court to gain connections. To be able to create trouble in the residence of Prince Zhu, one's subordinates have to be experts. One does not know why but one always feel that number 9 does not appear as simple as he looks. Prince Jing said, you should not underestimate him. All in all, Prince Zhu signed, this matter is not that simple. No matter if it is Prince Li or the Crown Prince, the oncoming person has ill intentions. I will closely investigate it again. One want to know who is the one behind playing tricks. Prince Jing nodded his head in agreement. Naturally Prince Zhu and Prince Li did not know that the other party who eliminated both of their assassins and returned it back to them was not the crown prince that they guessed but one who had nothing to do with them. However this method of redirecting the waters of calamity to the east was indeed not bad. In the fight between the princes of Ming Chi, unknowingly it had become fiercer, and in the passage of time, when everyone in the Shen family was uneasy about seeking appropriate candidates the imperial edict of the imperial family of Ming Chi did not come after a long time. This was not because of anything special but because Emperor Wen Hua was troubled by a matter. He asked the crown prince by his side, what is Great Liang's intention? Is to adopt a confrontational position with Ming Chi? Zen had never seen such an arrogant person before. The crown prince did not dare to speak up. Prince Ruai of Great Liang made a trip to the palace and one did not know what was spoken to Emperor Wen Hu. After Prince Ruai left, 
Emperor Wen Hua flew into a rage and threw the entire set of teacup on the table and almost wanted to destroy the imperial study. The crown prince guessed that some impudent words were spoken else Emperor Wen Hua would lose his self-control like this. Emperor Wen Hua indeed had flew into a rage. He was clearer than anyone on Ming Chi's current strength and it was no longer as strong as when the late emperor was alive. Facing the slightly better Ken country and flourishing and fertile Great Liang, there was actually nothing to be proud of. In this tribute banquet, it was done that grandly so as to conceal his lack of confidence and show to Great Liang and Ken country that Ming Chi has some abilities. It was just that these acts were only burying one's hand in the sand. Huang Fu Hao of the Qin country appeared to treat him with respect but in actual it was not. Because of Princess Ming'an's death, he did not let the Bureau of Investigations off thus the judicial officers were often working on writing a wrong for the Princess of Qin all the time that one would be laughed at if it was mentioned. However Emperor Wen Hua dared not refuse it as he wanted to win over the Qin country to deal with Great Liang. One did not need to mention about Great Liang. This Prince Ru I did things with his own set of rules. Huang Fu Hao at least showed respect for Emperor Wen Hu on surface but Prince Ru I did whatever he liked and did not show any indication of respect for him. Emperor Wen Hu comforted himself with that Prince Ru I had such a personality like that but did not expect that Prince Ru I would make a trip to the palace and chat in the imperial study. Emperor Wen Hu had the intention to establish good relations with Great Liang but was completely rejected by Prince Ru I. Even though it was not indicated clearly, but his attitude did not give Emperor Wen Hu any leeway at all. Emperor Wen Hu was after all a monarch of a country, thus when he loses face, naturally his expression was not good and it became solemn. Who knew that Prince Ru I did not even care that he would get angry and even casually mention about the several cities in the border of Great Liang and Ming Chi and the topic was all about taking back those cities. Emperor Wen Hua's expression changed in an instant. Those cities were not very big but there were a several mines within the area. Those or that were mined were used in most weapons. Those cities were just at the border of Ming Chi and Great Liang and previously Great Liang was not at all concerned about these as the people who lived in the cities were Ming Chi's commoners. Now with these words, what were their intentions? It meant that Great Liang had the intention of occupying these cities. With Ming Chi's military strength, it was not possible to compete with Great Liang. Prince Ru I was the appointed envoy for Great Liang and he represented Emperor Yongle of Great Liang's intention. Prince Ru I's seemingly casual sentence had revealed some of Great Liang's ambitions. What made Emperor Wen Hu incessant grievances was that he obviously knew about the other party's ambition but he dared not detain this treacherous Prince Ru I because he was unable to withstand Emperor Yongle's fury. There would still be some confidence if one had strike an alliance with Ken country but with only Ming Chi, he could only tolerate it. Being an emperor but without any dignity mad emperor Wen Hua's heart burn in fury. With Great Liang's ambition, who knows what would they do next. Your marriage with Shen Miao is not in a hurry. Emperor Wen Hua said, Zen cannot provoke Shen Zin now. It is the critical moment and if Shen Zin is dissatisfied with Zen, it would not be good as Great Liang would be able to exploit a loophole. The crown prince felt somewhat disappointed when he heard it but did not say much. He understood Emperor Wen Hua's temperament and the more he was like this, the more one should go along with him. Thus he said, this son is not in a rush and naturally would focus on major events. One did not think that Great Liang concealed such a malicious intent. We must not relax our vigilance with them, seeing the crown prince as such. Emperor Wen Hua was very pleased and patted his shoulders, Zen knows, don't worry. Even though Great Liang has such ambitions, Zen would not sit and wait for death and discuss with the Crown Prince of Ken tomorrow on alliance. If the Ken country knew about Great Liang's ambition, they would also be tense. It would be natural for them to strike an alliance with Ming Chi and at that time, one do not need to worry about Great Liang. Zen will then personally decree that the military power of the Shen family and that girl, Shen Miao, be yours. In the conversation, 
one took Shen Miao as an item that one was confident to place in another's bag. The crown prince smiled gently and complied but was somewhat resentful with Prince Rui in his heart as he said such things to Emperor Wen Hua just at this timing. The timing was just too coincident. Prince Ding gave him such a wonderful idea but it turned out empty with just a few words from Prince Rui that it made the crown prince extremely dissatisfied. But one could not do anything about it. The news that came from from the palace indicated that the marriage between Shen Miao and the crown prince were temporarily suppressed. Even though one did not know the reason behind, Princess Rongzin was relieved. That day when she saw Shen Miao in the palace, she let her personal palace maid sent Shen Miao out of the palace but she personally went to meet Emperor Wen Hua. Emperor Wen Hua was still courteous with Princess Rongzin so Princess Rongzin said that she liked Shen Miao a lot and hoped that Emperor Wen Hua would give up the decision on letting Shen Miao marry the crown prince, who knew that Emperor Wen Hua immediately went on a rage that he even used the words females could not discuss politics. Princess Rongzin also had a temper and said, Shen Miao's marriage is just a marriage between younger generations so how does it relate to politics? She started quarreling with Emperor Wen Hu on the spot. At the end Emperor Wen Hu was angered and requested her out of the palace. On that night, Princess Rongzin was so angry that her heart illness recurred again. Fortunately Emperor Wen Hua did not doubt why Princess Rongzin did it as the few encounters that Shen Miao had were all rescued by Princess Rongzin. From an outsider's eyes, one would find that Princess Rongzin and Shen Miao had some fate thus it was understandable for Princess Rongzin to treat Shen Miao special. No one would have guessed that the reason why Princess Rongzin was protecting Shen Miao was helping Xi Jingxing care for Shen Miao. It is good like this. Princess Rongxing said to Yang Gu Gu beside her. Ben Gong thought that this time one would not be able to help her and was feeling conscience stricken. Now that it is suppressed, there would be leeway to turn it around. Ben Gong will tell her about it. Else in the future when one reached the underworld, Ben Gong would not be able to face Jiang Xing. Yang Gu Gu quickly consoled. If little Marquis know about Princess's painstaking efforts, he would definitely be gratified. Just as she was speaking, one saw someone walking in from outside. The palace maid greeted before speaking softly, Your Highness, someone from the medical hall had sent the medical herbs over. Princess Rongzin was slightly startled before asking, wasn't it finished? She had heart illness for a number of years and there was a specific prescription for it and in it there was a particular herb that was extremely difficult and rare to find. There were only a limited amount in a year and almost all those herbs were sent to the princess residence. Previously when Xi Jingxing was around, one did not know what kind of methods were used every year to search for much more of it that Princess Rongzin was not at all worried. Later when Xi Jingxing died, the availability of the herbs in the medical hall returned to the former where one would not know if there would be stock for tomorrow. During winter days, it was even harder to look for it thus Princess Rongzin had not drank that medicine for a long time. Just a few days back there was no medicinal herbs and one did not think there would be some sent over today. The palace maid said happily. The doctor from the medical hall said that yesterday there was a traveling merchant who came to sell medicine and coincidentally there was a big batch of it thus the medical hall took all of it. Heard from the doctor that it is enough to use till next year. What a lucky coincidence. Yang Gu Gu also smiled, it is really lucky. Princess Rongzin waved her without paying much attention sent it to the kitchens. The palace maid complied quickly and when the palace maid left, Princess Rongzin then gave a bottle smile and sighed. When Jingxing was still around, there would be baskets of herbs that was sent over. Why is it now that it had become one's luck? Yang Gu Gu knew that she was thinking of Xi Jingxing and was saddened by it. Just as she wanted to change topics, one heard Princess Rongzin continue speaking. Support me to the Xing Yuan. Yang Gu Gu was startled. Xing Yuan was a courtyard in the princess residence. When Princess Yu Qing passed on, Princess Rongzin was angry with Zi Ding's actions and rough Zi Jing Xing to the princess residence for a period of time. Zi Jing Xing was fair and adorable and Princess Rongzin especially instructed people to build a courtyard for him. 
which was the current Xing Zhenyuan. Afterwards Zi Ding took Zi Jing Xing back but Princess Rongzin did not tear down Xing Zhenyuan. When Zi Jing Xing grew up, he would occasionally come over to the princess residence to stay for a few days and would rest in Xing Zhenyuan. It was only after Zi Jing Xing died in the battlefield two years ago. Princess Rongzin then sealed Xing Zinyuan and other than the servants who entered to clean, no one else was allowed to enter. She herself was afraid that seeing the objects would make one miss its owner, thus she never stepped into the courtyard a single step. However today for the first time ever in two years, she wanted to take a look at Xing Zinyuan. Yang Gugu did not dare to disobey Princess Rongzin's command and was somewhat worried as she supported Princess Rongxing to the Xing Zinyuan. Princess Rongzin said, One did not know why in these few days, one keep dreaming of Jing crossing. As she spoke, her expression became strange. Yang Gugu was somewhat puzzled with it. Princess Rongzin was feeling somewhat uneasy. These few days she had been dreaming every night. There would be a purple-clad youth in her dreams, wearing half a sliver mask. She did not know who it was and reached out to take the mask off the other party and that person had a face that was identical to Zi Jing Xing but called her Princess Rongzin. It was Prince Ru eyes of Great Liang voice. Princess Rongzin would always wake up in shock from her dream and her back would be drenched with sweat. She was thinking if it was due to that day she saw Shen Miao with Prince Ru Ai being entangled and the other party's little name that she had mixed Zi Jing Xing and Prince Ru Ai together that she became possessed at night. The more she thought, the more she missed Zi Jing Xing, thus she wanted to go to the Xing Zinyuan to take a look. As she was thinking about it, she had reached Xing Zinyuan. The guards that were outside Xing Zinyuan was somewhat surprised when they saw her as Princess Rongzin had not stepped in here for two years and did not allow others to enter too. The guards parted the way and Princess Rongzin entered with Yang Gugu. The room was exactly the same as it was two years ago, because there were people cleaning up every day. There was no dust at all and looked neat and tidy just like the past. It made Princess Rongzin felt that when she turned around, she would be able to see that handsome youth laying on the bed with his legs crossed and casually eating an apple. On the shelf were the little toys that Zi Jing Xing had liked to play since young and there were Zi Jing Xing's old clothes on the chair. Princess Rongzin walked to that char board and picked up the clothes as stroked the lines on it, remembering. It is exactly the same as before. Yang Gugu did not know what to say and if she said nothing, she feared that Princess Rongzin would be saddened by past memories. The golden threads on it is still new. Princess Rongzin laughed. Jing Xing, this child, has so many rules. When he was young, he was not willing to wear the colorful clothes that one had made for him and only like purple. Ben Gong find that purple is too mature and not suitable for children to wear and wanted to embroider some flowers but he disliked it a lot. Afterwards it was the seamstress in the palace that used golden threads to embroidery in the dark lines on the robes than he was willing to wear. He wanted it to be gorgeous but was not willing for it to be shining. Really have such mischievous thoughts. Yang Gugu also laughed. Little Marquis is respectable like gold and precious like jade that even though purple is matured, only Little Marquis can wear it that good. At the beginning when your highness brought Little Marquis into the palace, others thought that he was a prince. That appearance was just like one from the imperial family. Even Yu King did not have such a bearing. Princess Rongzin laughed as she touched the corner of the robes that had dark lines embroidered with gold threads but as she continued smiling, she slowly could not smile anymore. Her expression became solemn. Just like what she and Yang Gugu said just now, Zi Jing Xing was very particular of the clothes he wore and loved to wear purple clothes as it was gorgeous but was not overly showy and must use gold threads to be embroidered on the quarter of the robes. Because his expectations were high and the thread was very thin and the patterns were very unique. But on that day in the palace, Prince Ru Ai who was tugging with Shen Miao was wearing a purple gold robe and in Shen Miao's hands, the quarter of the clothes were golden thread that had the same patterns as what Zi Jing Xing usually wore. Princess Rongzin's health was not good but she was not blind. That day she saw Prince Ru Ai and heard Shen Miao calling Prince Ru Ai as Zi Jing Xing, and for a short moment, she treated Prince Ruai as Zi Jing Xing. But afterwards she saw Prince Ru Ai's expression and bearing. 
she felt it was unfamiliar and after hearing Prince Rui's explanation, she dispelled this thoughts. However she had felt that there was something wrong and after returning to the princess residence, she keep on thinking of Zi Jingxing and Prince Rui. She had always thought that the reason why she was brooding about it was because Prince Rui's little name was the same as Zi Jingxing but now she understood in a lightning bolt that the name did not matter as it was due to the corner of the other party's sleeve that she saw. After spending more than a decade with Zi Jingxing, Princess Rongzin regards Zi Jingxing like her biological child and a mother would be exceptionally attentive to one's child's matter even if it was a small little matter. She remembered the patterns on the clothes clearly and ever since Zi Jingxing died, she had not seen this pattern for two years and had not thought about it momentarily. Today she remembered it here that it was exactly the same pattern like Prince Ru I wore. Some things were destined and sometimes would only need a nudge before all the scattered pearls were stringed together and everything has an answer. Both liked to wear purple clothes, the same pattern on the corner of the robes. Both were called Jingxing and both had a special relationship with Shen Miao. Princess Rongzin suddenly remember about the basket of herbs. Why was it previously there was none and today it was available? It was because just a few days back, her heart illness erupted in front of Prince Rui and after a few days there was a traveling merchant that came by to sell the herbs. When there were too many coincidences, then it was no longer a coincidence. Once the seed of doubt sprouted, there was no reason for it to grow back. It would quickly spread out its branches and grew into a towering tree that became unshakable and deeply rooted in the soil that it was standing indestructible. Now thinking about it, when Zi Jingxing was young, there was an unclear nobility in it that one thought it was naturally and thought it was because one's blood was different. However this air had changed but there were things that were unchangeable, like some small habits such as feelings between loved ones. Princess Rongzin suddenly knelt down and pressed her heart. Yang Gugu jumped in shock and saw that Princess Rongzin's face was pale and large beads of sweat were forming on her forehead. She quickly called out, someone come quick. Quickly call the doctor. The princess's illness has erupted. A hand ferociously grabbed onto Yang Gugu's hands. Princess Rongzin's face looked in pain but her voice was very firm. Help me back to the study and bring an invitation over. She must personally verify one thing. When Shen Miao woke up, Lu Zhu Yan told her happily that the marriage between her and the crown prince was temporarily suppressed. Shen Zin established some access in the palace and found that it was related to Prince Rui. One heard that during the casual chat between Prince Rui and Emperor Wen Hua, several cities around the border were inadvertently mentioned. Emperor Wen Hua was worried that Great Liang had ill intentions and at such a critical juncture, it was necessary to draw Shen Zin, a strong general to his side. Thus for the time being, he would not be mentioning Shen Miao's marriage. Lu Zhu Yin said, Prince Rui matter came rather coincidentally but it resolved Zhao Zhao's desperate situation. With much more time, we can slowly choose a suitable talent for Zhao Zhao. Lu Zhu Yan, the person who spoke had no intention, but Shen Miao who listened had taken it to heart. Naturally she knew that Prince Rui did not inadvertently mention about those cities and cause Emperor Wen Hua to change his mind. At the same time as sighing in relief, Shen Miao could not help but be secretly shocked at Zi Jingxing's means. Zi Jingxing's method was not considered very brilliant but it was very effective. Just with a few words. He was able to trigger the worries of a monarch's heart and cause one to be hesitant. The crown prince's marriage fizzled out, Prince Ding's schemes came to nothing. It was one arrow that hit a number of eagles, making one truly happy. No wonder Zi Jingxing had an uncaring appearance when he spoke about the matter. So he already had this ability. As she thought, Shen Miao had some anger in her heart. She felt that she was in some difficult crisis but when it landed on Zi Jingxing's hands, it was resolved so easily and this made her felt very incompetent. She could not help but recalled Zi Jingxing's frivolous behavior last night and would love to beat Zi Jingxing up. Lu Tan said, Youngest Biao sister, why are you holding this book so tightly that the pages are almost darned? It was only then Shen Miao recovered to her senses and let go of her hands before looking embarrassed. Recently when she thought about Zi Jingxing, 
she would feel somewhat uncontrollable. It was all the other party's brazen actions to blame but it was only her that took troubles to heart. Lu Tan held her chin and looked at her with mischievously. Are you thinking that all three, older brother Ling, gentleman Su and eldest brother Feng are all good and do not know who to choose? Shen Miao said, you think too much. Lu Tan still wanted to speak more but seeing Lu Ling walking over from outside, Lu Tan stuck her tongue out before calling out, older brother Ling. Lu Ling smiled, what are you all talking about? Talking about youngest Biao sister's marriage. Lu Tan said loudly, youngest Biao sister still have not decided who to marry so I came over to inquire some information. Shin Miao felt helpless in her heart. Couldn't Lu Tan have a little tactfulness of a female? She just said it out like this and fortunately Shen Miao was one who had seen the world else if it was a normal female, they would be embarrassed to death. Shen Miao did not react to it but Lu Ling was somewhat awkward. He covered his mouth to cough before looking around. Younger Biao sister, did you like the safety pendant? Safety pendant? Shen Miao's brow wrinkled as she asked, what safety pendant? Lu Ling was startled. It is the one yesterday I... Before he finished speaking, the servant from outside interrupted, saying that Lu Zhu Yan requests Shen Miao to make a trip to the front hall. Lu Ling swallowed the words that had reached his mouth and smiled as he let Shen Miao leave first. Shen Miao smiled apologetically to help. Later one will chat with older Biao brother again. When she arrived at the front hall, she then know that someone from the princess residence had come to the Shen mansion. Princess Rongzin had sent an invitation to Shen Miao to make a trip to the princess residence. Princess Rongzin had saved Shen Miao several times and Shen Zin and wife were very grateful to her. Thus there was no reason to refuse. It was even more impossible for Shen Miao to say anything more. She smiled as she accepted the invitation but her heart was extremely heavy. If it was the past that Princess Rong Zin sent her an invitation, Shen Miao would not hesitate to accept it. Honestly speaking, Princess Rong Zin treated her well and because of the relation with Zi Jing Xing, she took care of her in all aspects. When she knew that Emperor Wen Hua had intention to bestow Shen Miao to the crown prince, she even spoken out for Shen Miao and Shen Miao was grateful about it in her heart. However Princess Rong Zin chose this time to send her an invitation. If it was to talk about the crown prince's matter, she could just send someone to speak about it. By sending an invitation for her to go to the princess residence was indicating that some matters required face-to-face -face discussion. But what matter could be this important? So important that Princess Rong Zin, who don't see other, would take the initiative to invite Shen Miao over to the princess residence for a visit. Shen Miao could not help but think about that day in the palace when Princess Rong Zin caught her and Zi Jing crossing. At that time she called Zi Jing Xing's name and afterwards Zi Jing Xing managed to bluff his way out but her heart felt restless. If one truly understood one's loved ones, no matter how the other party became, there would be some little habits that one adhere to. Shen Miao's intuition had always been accurate. She did not think that once Zi Jing Xing and Princess Rong Zin had seen each other, this matter could still be hidden. This conjecture was too scary that she dared not think too deeply since the consequences were too unpredictable. But avoiding was not a way out as trouble had found its way to the door. Shen Miao felt that Princess Rong Zin had discovered some suspicious areas but she was unable to refuse this invitation as by refusing it, it would be admitting to it. 